One of the most fabled countries of the Western world is Ireland, a body of land about the size of South Carolina, yet the home of a legendary and literature everywhere known and loved. An estimated 15 million Americans trace their ancestry to this little island with its long and tragic history. For centuries, all of Ireland was held in subjection to the British. But in 1922, the part of Ireland, now known as ERA, gained its independence, while Northern Ireland, predominantly Protestant, remained within the United Kingdom. The capital of Northern Ireland is Belfast, a thoroughly modern city of 440,000 people. Vigorous and aggressive, Belfast has built itself up to its present position in less than 100 years. center of the important Irish linen industry, Belfast is also famed throughout the world for its shipyards, where some of Britain's great ocean liners have been built. Many of Ulster's Protestants are known as Orangemen through their ancestors' loyalty to William of Orange, King of England, two and a half centuries ago. Now, as in olden days, Orangemen turn out in full regalia each 12th of July to celebrate the Battle of the Boyne, William's signal victory over the Catholic House of Stuart. But Northern Ireland's pride and its loyalty to Britain is more than matched by the pride of era across the border in its newly won independence. In the free and sovereign state of era, so different from Northern Ireland in politics and religion, independence is first in the thought and speech of every citizen. Since we have only recently won the political independence we have been battling for through centuries, our nationalism is still too much in our thoughts to make worrying about the rest of the world a major concern of ours. Freedom has brought no riches to Ireland. We have lived too long and too intimately with poverty to be rid of it in a few short years. Ireland is agricultural in the main, and the southern counties have little in the way of industry. But in every market town where the farmers go to sell their beasts or their produce, to drive their bargains for a few shillings gain. There's talk of Ireland's future and of politics. For if this land is poor, it is still ours to make or mar. To Irishmen in every land, Ireland's very names are magical. Connemara and Galway, Killarney, Donegal and Innisfail, names that live in the laments of poets who have sung to sweeten Ireland's wrong. Yet few of them there are on the outside who would care to trade places with Ireland's farmers and they toiling and working from the rising of the sun to its setting to till the soil that bore them. But spare us the living yielded by our land we Irish have fought again and again to set it free, to make our farms and cottages our own, and Ireland's own. Through centuries of want and oppression, we Irish have learned that few things are easily won or easily held, be it a roof over our heads, or wool to clothe us, or a fire on the hearth to warm the children, or freedom to live in our own way. Strong is most Irishmen's love of the church St. Patrick brought to Ireland from Rome in the 5th century. As Yeats wrote of the parish priest, But Father John went up, and Father John went down. And he wore small holes in his shoes, and he wore large holes in his gown. All loved him, only the Shawneen, whom the devils have by the hair. From the wives, and the cats, and the children, to the birds in the white of the air. In Ireland, 
religious faith is no mere convention, for deep in the Celtic nature is a hunger for the things of the spirit. Most of our people are Catholics, but freedom of worship is complete and church and state are separate by our constitution. Maynooth College carries on the traditions of those Irish scholars who kept Roman culture alive throughout Europe's dark ages. The priests it educates go out to every corner of Ireland, not alone to keep strong the piety of our people, but to shape their moral thinking as well. The Irish family that sends a son to Maynooth may forever after hold up its head in the presence of its neighbours, for there is no higher calling among the young men of Ireland. And for 15 centuries, men of God have been helping to form the character of the Irish people, their faith, their culture, and their way of life. Today, Ireland's people who have known so much of tragedy and bloodshed are at peace. Race week at Leopardstown still brings out all of Dublin and thousands from all over the land to put a few bob on the winner. A love of horses comes as easy to the Irish as politics, for the breeding and racing of horses has for hundreds of years been at once a hobby and a livelihood to many of them and it's in our nature to take a chance. Other sports have gone on undisturbed in Ireland while the world has been at war. When we go by the thousands to the great football and hurling matches, and sit or stand packed together while the game goes on, we have a sense of our unity and our nationality. Prime Minister of Era is New York-born Eamon de Valera, hero of the Irish Rebellion and one-time mathematics professor. Today, he continues to voice the program he launched in 1932 to make his country economically self-sufficient. <laughs>